What's going on guys, it's Rylan with Rylan's Amazing Photography and welcome to today's video. Another story behind the image, I don't know what episode this is. Um, it's been a while since I've did any other images in this series. But today I'm going to be doing this pretty cardinal that's on your screens right now. Um, I think this bird is absolutely gorgeous. I, I mean, I just, I can't resist this bird. I mean, it's just so amazing and just... I mean the snow and it's red contrasting feathers it's just incredible so when I took this image I was um, in a photo blind um, it was around I think it was around three o'clock ish um, it had been snowing uh, pretty much all day and it had snowed the night before as well and um, so I thought that it would be really fun to go out and um, you know have a photo shoot, um, photograph some birds and what other animals um, would show up. Obviously, I was hoping for like a fox or a deer or something um, a little out of the ordinary, but um, I was very happy to see that cardinal had arrived. Um, and so, obviously, I began to photograph the cardinal because cardinals are one of my favorite birds and favorite animals in general to photograph. Um, they're just so unique with their red feathers. Um, it's something that you don't see every day, and they really stand out in their environment, especially in white snow. So the cardinal came and it had been landing behind a tree, but I could not get it to come out in the open. So I got a few shots of its head, you know, kind of peeking out around the tree, but I never got a full body shot. And finally, um, I had been looking down at my phone and then I looked back up and there sat the cardinal pretty much directly in front of my camera, um, just out on an open tree limb with snow on the limb that it happened to be sitting on. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get this shot. And so I got my camera um, I got my sights focused in on the cardinal and snap I took the image and then obviously this is what came out of it so now that we've got the story um, let's go ahead and get into the technical aspect of things talking about my settings and how I edited the image allow me to quickly interrupt this video and tell you that today's video is sponsored by me that's right um, my first ever photo book out of the darkness is officially out and available for purchase this book is about my first year journey as a photographer and has all kinds of different nature related stuff wildlife landscapes it's got anything that you could ever imagine as far as nature goes um to purchase this book you can go to blurb.com and search out of the darkness or you can click either one of the links in the description you might say rollin i don't want to buy an in-person copy i don't want to be able to hold this book and look at it first off i can't imagine why you would say that but if you do say that don't worry you can buy an ebook copy that you can read on any of your devices so let's go ahead and get back to me in the video. Okay, so this image was taken at 1 400th of a second at f5.6 with an ISO of 2500. Um, the camera I was using at the time was my Nikon D500 and I was using my Nikkor 200 to 500 millimeter lens. Um, I have a review on that lens and I have a lot of videos of me out in the field using that lens. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and click up here in the right hand corner. Um, so that was my settings. Um, I feel like they were all pretty good. I, it was a little underexposed before I edited it, so maybe crank up the ISO a little more, but obviously that would have gave a little bit more noise. So there was only so much I could do with that ISO. I didn't want it to be um, having too much noise that I couldn't recover from. So how did I edit this image? Well, obviously I started out with some basic exposure adjustments because it was a little bit underexposed. So obviously I did all of the basic adjustments, I um, upped the vibrance, and in particular I went down under colors and I upped the vibrance in the red in particular to have it really stand out and pop against the white background of the snow. Um, so obviously I did those adjustments all in Adobe Lightroom, and once I was finished with that I decided that I wanted to take this edit to the next level and I wanted to go even farther with it in Photoshop. So um, when I was in Lightroom I right clicked and I clicked edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. Um, if you're interested in how I edit my photos, you can click right here, which was actually the last video um, where I give you a in-depth tutorial of how I edit my images, and that was no different for this particular image right here. So once I opened this image in Photoshop, um, I started off by selecting the bird and masking it out. When I masked it out, I went ahead and copied that layer, and I used um, a filter on it called High Pass. What High Pass does is it really brings out the detail and kind of sharpens the image, and it just makes that bird look a little bit better and makes it look sharper than the rest of the image and really detailed. So after I did this, I did something that I've always done, which is dodge and burn the image. 
any great image that I think could win an award or just an image that I love in general, I always dodge and burn the image. Um, I do this by selecting um, and blending a 50% gray layer onto a copy of the layer that I'm on. Um, and by doing this, I can use the brush tool um, using white to whiten up the areas that I want to brighten and using the black to darken the areas that I want to darken. So I kind of darkened the bird a little bit. I lit it up in some places and then I really um, darkened it around its beak where it has the black patch of feathers. So once I'd done all this, I thought, okay, the image is really great, but there's snow everywhere and I'm just not feeling like it's popping. I just don't feel like this image has really went to the next level after doing that. And so I decided to use the Dodge and Burn 50% gray layer to do something um, that looks really nice and pretty realistic and incredible, which is add snow. Um, you do this by just kind of brightening up um, your Dodge and Burn tool, which is the brush tool. You just kind of up its opacity um, to what looks good, placing it on the background layer. I have a like I said, a full in-depth tutorial if you click that video on how I do that. And um, I added the snow to that image. Um, you change your brush size so they're not all the same size or it's going to be obvious that it's fake. Because um, no snowflake is going to be falling like the same size behind your subject. And that's how I really felt like the image went to the next level. And I feel like I accomplished what I was hoping to accomplish with that image once I did that edit. Well, that's all I have for today's video. Sorry it's a little short. Um, I do kind of want to get back into the groove of doing the series story behind an image. It's been kind of cold and rainy outside and I haven't been getting out and shooting as much as I should. Um, but there will definitely be some more videos of me out in the field coming very soon. I'm sure hopefully Thursday we'll have some kind of wildlife or bird photography video. So definitely make sure you stick around for that. It would help me out a lot if you go down below and like today's video. While you're down there go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on Instagram at Rollins Amazing Photography. Follow me on Twitter at Rollins Photos. Follow me on Facebook, Rollins Amazing Photography. And I hope you guys have an amazing day.